I probably should have started recording this before I started draining the water. This is, I don't know, it's like eight and a half gallons is one of my offer up tanks. I think it was a reptile tank once and small enough that it holds water without busting out. I've got a serious cyanobacteria problem in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm draining it down. I'm gonna take it apart. I'm gonna try and clean up all these little crypts as best as possible. And I might soak them in a little bit of a peroxide solution, but then I'm going to try something that was recommended to me by a friend. This is that. Uh, it says stain remover, but he says that it'll kill it too. So I want to get rid of as much as possible. There's, uh, and it's supposed to be sh uh, safe with invertebrates. There are, or were, blue dream shrimp in here. There was a guppy in here that I found floating in, in my guppy tank and I thought it was dead. So I just, I think I just threw it in here to feed the shrimp and next thing I know it's swimming around. So I just put it back with its, its colleagues. So we'll see if there's still any shrimp in here, but I'm gonna clean these up as best as I can, get rid of all that cyanobacteria off the top of these pots and maybe even unplant, deplant, uh, disimplant, no, I don't know. Uh, and then clean up these little crypts. I forgot what they are, crypt parvifolia maybe. There's also some crypt wendii in the back and a big chunk of Christmas moss that's doing really well. Uh, it was just a little, a couple straggler little pieces and it's all of a sudden, it is doing quite nice. So I want, I don't want to upset its apple cart too much. It turns out I'm able to just roll off most of this blue green slime. It comes out in wads like this, brings a little of the gravel with it. So I'm just dropping these into a bucket of water. I don't want them to dry out while I'm doing this. So this is it. I see some shrimp, there's, there's one. In fact, there's a couple. So I'll get the shrimp out of here. And then I think what I am gonna do is take this tank apart, hose it out, scrub it, bleach it. And, and when I say bleach, I'm, I'm just gonna use that, uh, I think it's Clorox brand, it doesn't matter. Just a household, you know, the kitchen bleach spray. They're what, they're two, three, four percent bleach and just spray it all, let it sit for a few minutes scrub it out with a sponge and it should be good to go and then after afterwards you know just make sure it's rinsed really well uh, and it'll probably have less of the chlorine in it than what comes out of most people's taps so i don't worry about it i have never had a problem with it i've bleached buckets of rocks that were covered in algae uh pieces of driftwood that are covered in algae and as long as you just rinse well it works and it's safe so let's see if we, how many shrimp we can rescue here. Well, I'm working in two gallon buckets, so I've got to go empty one of these because the other two have plants in them. Let me show you. So the one at the far end back there, back there, that's going out. That's, and I water plants with it. I don't throw that stuff away. Full of nutrients, water house plants. This time it's just going to go water patio plants. And the other two buckets are uh, the potted plants that I just took out. There's one. So where are we at now? Two, four, five. That makes six. So we take this outside, give it a rinse, give it a scrub, and bring it back in. Uh, but first, we'll deal with these uh, shrimps. I'll go float those. So the shrimp are floating. A little hydrogen peroxide. Stuff's cheap. I think it was like two fifty for two bottles at Costco. So I'm going to pour, I don't know, like half a cup in each one of these buckets with the plants. And they can sit in there for a while while I'm cleaning out this tank. All right, well, I looked and I looked again and I haven't seen anybody left in here. So I'm gonna go rinse this off in the planter bed. All right, so I just cleaned it out with one of these sponges. Got it pretty well. But I think what I'm gonna do, some of the spray bleach, and we'll just go all the way around the top, spin this around. Ah, you don't want to breathe this stuff. It'll run down the sides. It'll collect on the bottom. 
and I will just let that sit for a few minutes and then I will go rinse it out again. And that should, that should take care of any of the algae stain that's left and hopefully kill off any of the cyanobacteria that's left. And then I'll rinse it out and set it back up, put the plants back in, put water back in. Um, hopefully the blue-green algae doesn't come back with that stuff. As it's gonna go back in the tank on the pots of crypts that I pulled out. So the idea, got the bulk of it cleaned out. The idea is to uh, kill it off. All right, so I sprayed it all really well with bleach and you can see it's dried, it's warm out here. I don't know how hot, but we are outside, we are in the desert and it's still hot. So I gotta make sure I rinsed out really well and then what I will do is I will stick my nose in here, make sure I don't smell bleach after I do rinse it out. All right, well, we're back. It's in, it smells good. It smells like nothing, which is good. Uh, cleaned up nicely. There's still a little bit of hard water deposit around it. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, I poured that peroxide in here and there was all kinds of bubbles coming up. There still are. So now I'm wondering, and I never, ever, ever hesitate to second guess myself. Um, but I'm still not sure. You can see bubbles coming up in here too from the peroxide. So I don't think that'll hurt anything now that I think about it. I think I'll, I'll still use this water. I'll probably run a net around if I can find her. You know, if we had two Perrys, we could put a net between them and play platypult badminton. Who's a net? Fur, that's it. I know what we're going to do today. No, seriously, who's a net? Run a net around uh, the surface to pick up some of the sludge but I'm gonna be really careful to get all the plants back in and most of the water, and then I'll put some fresh tap on it. What else? Uh, the, the regular dechlorinator stuff. And if there's any residue from the bleach left at all, that'll take care of it. There it is, all wonderfully cloudy. Plants floating, plants in pots at the bottom. Uh, it's a little low. I will top it off when I do a water change or a top off in, on the tanks in the garage. This water came out of the hose. It's 85 and a half, 86 degrees. Uh, it's about 10 degrees more than the was than everything else in the in the garage. It's all about 76. The ambient temperature in here. I don't heat any tanks this time of year. There is mini split on the wall up there. So now what I'm going to do is dose the tanks. Uh, this says leaf zone, but actually I bought two bottles. They both leaked. So fortunately, I was able to salvage them. So what's it say? I'm going to use out of about less than five mils for probably about six gallons right now, maybe seven. And then just cause a little CO2 boost and that says five mils for 50 gallons. A little extra won't hurt anything. Too much will. So it's a CO2 booster and if it adds CO2 to the water, uh, too much CO2, you can actually suffocate the, the critters that you put in. Um, and a little bit of this potassium, a little extra potassium. You know, I'm not sure if potassium just gets used up really fast around here or if uh, it, there's a deficiency. I've been doing another series of videos on the kitchen tank and the leaf holes in the necrotic tissue. I'm gonna use about a little more than half of the cap full here. The necrotic tissue on Java fern and crypts in that tank. and. It's actually also on Anubias, and it's showing up in this tank right here, this 75 gallon. And then a squirt of uh, Easy Green. Now I've got to go get another bottle of that because we're running low. A little extra. All right, well, let's see what we need to do with this Ultra Life Reef Products Blue Green Slime Stain Remover. Um, contains natural cellular matter. Okay, let's just read the whole thing. Ultralife Blue Green Slime Stain Remover is a revolutionary, time-tested product that will effectively and safely remove green, blue-green algae stains from your freshwater aquarium. Ultralife Blue Green Slime Stain Remover contains natural cellular matter, I don't know what that means, select biological accelerators and special supplements proven effective in removing blue-green slime stains while being safe uh, for desirable macroalgae, nitrifying bacteria, and fish. Due to the increased biological digestion of organic solids, we recommend increasing your O2 levels. So I should put the airstone back in here. 
uh, by the addition of air stones prior to and during uh, product usage directions. Now I thought I saw somewhere where it said it was safe for uh, invertebrates. So let's keep on. Thoroughly mix two level spoonfuls, spoonful, that's what it says, mix two level spoonful for each 15 gallons of aquarium water with a small amount of water from the aquarium to be treated. Pour dissolved solution into the aquarium. Repeat after 48 hours. Wait at least one week before additional treatments. So repeat once in 48 hours, then wait. Okay. For best results, do not turn on UV sterilizer. No need for water changes or removal of carbon filtration. Filter uh, treats up to 150 gallons. Contains no algicides or erythromycin succinate, which is an antibiotic. Keep out of reach of children for aquarium use only. Warning may affect pH, oxygen, and ammonia levels. All right, let's see what's inside. Maybe I was dreaming when I saw it was safe for invertebrates. Here's a little bottle. You know, nowhere does it say it kills the stuff, it just says it removes the stain. All right, I'm only gonna, here's the spoon, by the way. I'm only gonna use one level spoon because this is about half of the 15 gallons. And I am going to hook up the air stone. All right, so I found an air stone. I was gonna try and put a little sponge filter in here. Couldn't find one, I think I'm out. So, a little bitty measuring cup, a little bit of water, if we can see that up there. A little bitty measuring cup. And we're gonna use just a single scoop of this lovely Pepto-Bismol pink salt. Oh, this is not cool. It is so full that it's hard to scoop any out. <laughs> All right, so I forgot to hit go. So there's already a scoop in the, in the measuring cup. But what I did was over a piece of paper. So it, if it falls out, I can catch it. And it did. So scooped out, went in the measuring cup. And then what I rescued, you don't want to lose it because this stuff is pricey. And we'll just pour it back in. And it saved most of it. I might have lost a few grains of it. And then I'll put all this back together. Better still, my handy dandy Disneyland straw. Straw. Disneyland spoon, don't mind me. And stirring, and it looks thoroughly dissolved. No, I'm not gonna taste it. Rinse the spoon off. And then yeah, there's a few bigger pieces that were in suspension. So we'll just pour this in the water. So instead of uh, breaking out the, the whole test kit, I'm gonna do it the lazy way. These five in one test strips. pH check right away. So one, two, a little extra, whatever. Yeah, I think it's closer to seven, five. So in 48 hours, I'll set an alarm and, and I'll dose it again. And then we'll just do another follow up down the line to see how this is doing maybe in a week or so. Because remember, there is still residue all over those little uh, cryptocorian parvifolia pots. So, tank's clean, but it's on the pots. Well, here's the other tank with the blue-green algae. It's the tank full of juvenile bettas and juvenile bronze quarries. There's some amano shrimp in here. There's one. And then I've got a fry tray. And in the fry tray, there are some albino crebensis fry and maybe even some albino uh, cori fry. I put a few eggs in before we left over the weekend. They laid on a java fern leaf and they're not there anymore. So fry or the crebensis fry are way too small to eat the eggs. And I'm hoping they're way too small to eat the fry. So I'm hoping they hatched out. But anyway, here's that stuff. Again, it's uh, two of those little scoops per 15 gallons of water. But this is the tank I wanted to, uh, to try it on without doing a full clean because you can see it on that crypt back there. Get my finger in there, right there. There's blue green algae growing on that. You can see it all over the bottom of the tank here, growing on the side of the tank. This tank, I've been fighting it uh, for quite a while. And this is the tank also that's got the, the blackbeard algae growing off that sponge filter. And a little cyanobacteria right in front of that little bronze quarry. All right, so here goes. Let me slosh this around a little more to, because there's some uh, bigger chunks that precipitated out. There we go. So there we are. And when we do the follow-up, we will do the follow-up on both tanks. This one and that uh, farm tank that we worked on earlier. 
And remember, the instructions said that you didn't have to remove carbon or anything like that. There isn't any in here. There's, there is air circulation. I will keep an eye on the ammonia levels. There's a lot of fish in here. There's about 30 bettas and probably about 20 uh, little quarries. So it's, it's, it's a busy little tank. So we'll keep an eye on it, keep an eye on the numbers.